Hey, what's going on everybody? Today is the day. The day for what? The day we start to make our hard cider for the year. This is last year's batch of our hard cider. This is made from Fuji Crisp apples. It's uh, not Honey Crisp, but Fuji Crisp. That's right. Cross between a Fuji and a Honey Crisp. Killer, really sweet, high sugar content and it really ferments well. We also make it from our Anna apples and our Golden Dorset, and that's what we're gonna be making today. We age this for about six months, then we bottled it up, keep it cold, and it's so refreshing and tasty. If you ever come by, I'll prove it to you. Here's Anna. They're all different sizes, different shapes. I mean, this is from the same exact tree, right? That's what happens. Different flavors, different shapes, you got it. Uh, here's a golden dorset. Look at that. Beautiful. I wish you guys could smell how good these smell. What we've done is we picked these about three to four weeks ago. The ones we want to eat and preserve and keep really fresh, we keep in the refrigerator and cold storage. These ones we kept at room temperature in the other room. And what they've done is they've ripened fully and if you could actually smell this whole entire room here, smells delicious like apples, sweet, beautiful apples. Oh, they smell so good. There's apples that are beautiful, apples that are ugly, totally organic. Any of these spots here, we just cut those off. And what we'll do is we'll cut up all these apples, peel and all. You don't want any seeds in there. You don't want the core. You want to take off any bad spots like these apple scab here from the wet weather we had. Just cut those off. Underneath, the fruit is perfect. You want to take off any bruised parts like this right here. Cut that out. Get some good fresh apple in there. What we'll do is we'll put them in this pot right here. We'll cook them up. We'll add a little bit of sugar. We'll add water. We will cook them to break down these apples, break down these sugars, and then we'll dump them in this five-gallon bucket that we've sanitized and cleaned. We'll fill it full of water, we'll mix it all up, then we'll pitch our yeast. Uh, we'll probably use two, technically one of these packets will do five gallons, but I really feel that you need at least two. This is a five gram packet right here. This is a champagne yeast that works really well for making cider. It doesn't have any off flavors, doesn't have a yeasty bread flavor. It's really a benign flavor. So the apples come through really good. First thing we want to do, get our little work area set up right here. This is where we're going to cut them up. That's where we're going to put the apples we're going to use. Got to have a napkin, keep everything nice and dry. This is what we're going to use for the apples that we cut up, the cores, and we're going to compost all of that stuff. And this right here is what we're going to use for our hard cider. Because you know, you got to drink hard cider when you make hard cider, right? Oh, I wish you could smell that. It smells really good. I'll avoid uh, right out of the bottle because we like to share it. And instead, I'll opt for just pouring it in a glass. Just a little bit, not too much. That can go right back in the fridge for later. And this will keep us company over here. Get to work, enjoy the process. I'll probably uh, kick on a show here in a minute. And enjoy, these are, God, those smell good. You gotta have a little taste. Yep, really sweet and a much higher sugar content. And we're not gonna worry too much about cutting these up small because what we'll do is we'll cook these a little bit, release the sugars with some additional sugar and water. And then we'll take our immersion blender and we'll basically puree everything so it's really easy for the yeast to just break that stuff down. So I got my work cut out for me here. No need to bore y'all. But it's really all you do. It's just a time-consuming process. Sit back. I'm going to turn the TV on, catch up on a show, maybe watch a little uh, 
I don't know. Catch a little Ross Ratty or something. There's a golden door set. Give you a look inside one of these. Let me give you a shot of that. So that one you can see is starting to core, starting to around the seeds, starting to get a little overripe. But that's perfectly fine. You cut out any of the brown, cut out the core. You don't want any seeds in there. Seeds have basically arsenic in them. Commercial cider makers probably just grind them all up. Don't worry about it, but we don't want to deal with that. We make a really high product, right? Homegrown, homemade, way better. Now the fun part and the easy part, just don't burn yourself. I turned the heat off and uh, they're mushy. So do not splatter this on yourself. And it's nice to have a different consistency. You don't want to have it all pureed. And I've got some raw chunks in the bucket I'll show you later. What that does is it gives a longer food supply or longer nutrients for the yeast to feed on, which really helps the fermentation process. If you blend everything out the same consistency, the yeast will have a tendency to eat up that food in the same amount of time and be finished working. It seems if you let it do a longer period of time, uh, it actually works with a better finished product. Oh, that's good. In the bucket, I've got some whole apple slices. I haven't crushed them, I haven't cooked them. And what that's gonna do is allow the yeast to feed for a longer period of time, and it's gonna give us a better product. Now what we wanna do is we wanna be very, very careful. We wanna add that hot mash that we made. Try to give you a good view here. There you go to this bucket without making a mess or getting third degree burn. Want to try to get as much of that out of there as we can. I'm going to add some cold water to this pot. We're going to keep adding some cold water. Temperature is way too hot to pitch the yeast. That sweetness level is perfect. This is my handy master. Had it for years. Uh, you want to make sure everything is clean before you use it. We're going to use this every day. I like to stir my mash every single day. Some people don't. But I like to stir it and get everything moist, push it down, stir it and agitate it around. That way we really reduce the risk of getting any mold uh, on this top layer. So if you have this top layer up here and it's exposed to air, that's how you're going to get mold. If you come in here every day, once a day, pop your lid, be really careful not to get anything in there and give it a nice stir, push that cap down, mix it around. You'll love what you get in the end. I need to wake my yeast up. So what we're going to do is we're going to sprinkle that over the top of that liquid mash. Going to grab a little spoon and we're going to give it a nice easy mix. And I'm going to add another one. 
probably going to do three packets, maybe just two. I think I did two last year and it worked out great. Nice, gentle stir. Some people will say not to stir it, but you know what? I've never had a problem. So that's what that looks like. And you're just going to wait. You're going to start to see some bubbles come through there. That tells you your yeast is alive. It's waking up. And then you're going to add it to your main five-gallon bucket right there. Then we'll cap it with the lid. And in this hole right here, we'll put this airlock. And we're going to fill this airlock, not with water, but with vodka. And the reason we do vodka is because it will keep anything from growing in there. So water can get stagnant, can get stale, um, can get bad and rancid, and you don't want to drip it back into your fermentation. So vodka is a perfect thing to use. It works great. I've used it for years. Uh, and it doesn't evaporate out of there. You put it in there once, that'll last a good two, three months. And we will keep that in that primary fermentation container for at least 30 days, maybe a little bit longer. Make sure everything's uh, worked off, that there's no more bubbles in it. And once you don't see any more bubbles in that airlock, we let it go for another week or two in that primary fermentation. And then what we'll do is we'll rack it out of there, or we'll siphon it out of there, into glass containers. That way we can see uh, the sediment settle down to the bottom of the glass container, and then we'll rack it out of there, then we'll rack it out of there into bottles, and before you know it, that cloudy, thick, brown mixture will turn into clear heaven in a bottle. I'd say our yeast is ready to rock and roll. What we'll do now is we'll gently add that to our mixture and we want to get all of it so we'll go like that give that a little bit of a stir kind of spread that out a little bit and that colony will spread out and do its thing got our airlock full vodka up to the line we'll put that in a nice quiet place where we can keep an eye on it and tomorrow when we come out that airlock should be bubbling why would it be bubbling because that's the yeast eating the sugars and turning those sugars into alcohol so i hope you enjoyed this video it's a fun thing to do make your own hard cider if you choose to uh, you can make actually regular cider, just don't add the yeast. Let it ferment uh, out a little bit, no yeast in there, and you can have a great drink. In about six months from now, it'll be fantastic. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. See you on the next video. Bye-bye.